Hi everyone, Aiden here with the trailer. Today we're taking a look at the Yakima Ridgeback on our 2020 Kia Sorento. The Ridgeback is a hanging style bike rack. It hangs the bike by the frame and it's going to secure it with these two zip strips over the top of the frame. It's got a third one around the seat post over there to limit our side to side movement. It doesn't totally eliminate it, but it does help and reduce that bike to bike contact. Because it's hanging style, we do want to avoid carbon frame bikes. And with kids bikes, and alternative frame bikes, we probably need to pick up a bike adapter bar to ensure that the bike either hangs level or will fit on those dual arms at all. The dual arms in particular are not too forgiving for those smaller kids bike frames, and that's why you need that bike adapter bar. The only other thing we need to keep in mind is the 150 pound weight capacity. That's throughout all four of the cradles. Now, if you're only carrying one bike like we are here today, you could load up a single 40 pound bike on this innermost cradle and it would be fine there too. Aside from all that though, it's going to be pretty easy to operate. We do have a tilting feature that we can use to get access to the back of the vehicle, but we have to do it with the bikes unloaded because with how far it tilts down, it would make contact with the ground, or at least the bike would. Now, getting these zip strips undone is simple. We just pinch the two tabs on the side and lift it out. It doesn't stay on the rack like that, so you will want to keep track of it so you don't lose it and either put it back on the bike rack or maybe even keep it in your car. Now, I'll just kind of set that to the side there. You can lift the bike up and away. Setting this off to the side. You can see that the cradles do have some padding in there and some grooves for the cables on our bike to run through so they aren't getting pinched. And then I always like to replace the zip strips just so we don't lose them down here in the shop. You can pop all three of those in. And then on the front of the mask, we've got a gray or a black lever, excuse me. The black lever can pull out and you can tilt the whole rack down like this. This will open up access to the back of our vehicle to grab something or to sit back here to change our shoes before or after our ride. I'll go ahead and put this back down. And on the back of the mast, you can see where we've got a slot where we can add a cable lock if we want to. You can pick that up separately. We do offer it here on our site and that can add some security for your bikes. With it like this, I'm gonna grab my tape measure and we can get some measurements. The first one being the distance added to the back, coming from the bumper to the end of the arms. It's gonna be right at 40 inches. Now, if we have bikes unloaded and we wanna leave this in the hitch between rides, we can fold the arms down using the gray lever up top. That will condense things down quite a bit, only sticking out 10 and a half inches now to the end point at the bottom. So that's a lot more manageable, easier to fit into a parking space or maybe even your garage at home. Down near the hitch, we've got our anti-rattle knob at the end. That's gonna secure things in the hitch and keep things nice and solid. And it is lockable, so we've got that security aspect. Coming over to the hitch, it's working with our two inch by two inch receiver tube, but it will work with an inch and a quarter if we remove that adapter sleeve. And overall, I think the Ridgeback is a really solid bike rack. The fact that it uses these levers makes it really easy to operate, but personally, I would look into something like the Kurt Premium. It isn't as easy to use for the tilting and folding, but the arms do narrow together at the end to be more accommodating for kids' bikes. So if you're looking at this bike rack for your family and you've got those kids' bikes, that's worth looking into. Plus, it has a higher weight capacity, so you can fit a little bit more on there. Whichever way you go, though, I think they're going to be a really solid fit for your Sorento. Thanks for watching. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. And finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.